Hi there, Excel lovers. I have some good news for you. Currency exchange rates are now live here in Excel due to the enhanced stock data type. I'm Nabil Murad. In this simple project, I can select the from currency, let's say Australian dollar, from a drop list, and then the to currency, let's say Canadian dollar, and then type an amount. I'll be typing 500. And then when I hit enter, here you go. I get the equivalent, that's the exchange rate, live, right now. The idea is, if you have some currency pairs, you can immediately get the exchange rate. So if I click on the data tab, and then click on the stocks data type, I get the names of these currencies. And then if I click on the add column tag, I can select the from currency. I can click again and select the two currency and then click again and get the price which is the exchange rate. I could then build my live currency converter by combining simple yet powerful tools. Power Query, VLOOKUP function, a simple macro and above all the new exchange rate. I'm using for this tutorial Office 365 Professional Plus with Office Insider. If this new functionality is not yet available to you, it will soon become available to everyone. Now, let's build our project from scratch in Excel. Here is my Excel start file. I'll be creating the functionality for currency exchange in row number 2 of the Exchange Rates Worksheet. I start my project by browsing the internet for a website that shows currency symbols. I found this one, let me show it to you, and I copied and pasted the link in the source worksheet. Let's have a look at the website. Here are the currency symbols, and if I scroll down, I have a column that shows the different currencies and another column that shows the abbreviation. I would like to bring this table into Excel, and I'll be using Power Query. So I go back to Excel, and then I go to the list worksheet where I'll be bringing the data and dumping it into this worksheet after cleaning it and transforming it. I go to the data tab of the ribbon and on the data tab to the very left I click on get data and then from other sources I want to bring data from the web so I select from web. A dialog box from web opens, I'll be pasting the URL for this site and then when I hit OK it should connect to that site and open the navigator window of Power Query. In the navigator, it shows me the different tables available. I have a preview box on the right side. I look at the first one. That's not the one that I want. I click on the second one. Yes, that's the one I want. It has some problems. So I want to get it, clean it, and transform it into Power Query. So I start by clicking on Transform Data. My Power Query editor window will open on top of Excel. And on the right side, I see the applied steps. I see the currency column. I see the abbreviation and I just want to bring these two columns but I do have a little issue here because the currencies are grouped by alphabet. For each group of currency it shows a letter on top of each group. I want to get rid of this letter before bringing the data I want to clean my data. Among the columns I have a decimal column for the price and the way I'm going to get rid of this letter at the beginning of each group is by changing the data type of the decimal column. So if I click on this little icon on the left side of the column header and then select decimal number, it will convert everything to decimal by replacing the current data type. So I hit OK, but for the characters, it's returning an error. And that's wonderful because I can go up at the top on the Home tab and select Remove Rows. I want to get rid of those rows having errors and that should fix the problem. When I click on Remove Errors, look at that. I was able to get rid of these rows. Now I don't need all this column, I just need the currency column and then I press shift and click on the ISO column and then right click and say remove other columns. After cleaning and transforming my data I want to send it back to Excel so I click on the down arrow for close and load, close and load to, it will take me back to Excel. I want to dump it in this worksheet, the list worksheet, so I select existing worksheet and then hit OK and that will bring my clean data, the list of currency and the list of abbreviations. I'm going to close the queries and connections window on the right side. I don't need it for now. Using the table that I brought by using Power Query, I'm going to create two drop lists 
for the currency in the exchange rates were cheap. So I start by creating my first drop list. I go to the data tab of the ribbon and click on data validation. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Alt-DL tab L tab. What do you want as a source? I go to my list worksheet and select column A, shift control down arrow, and that's exactly what I want. I hit OK and I would have created my first drop list and let's select from this drop list Australian dollar. I want to create another drop list for the two so I'm going simply to hover over the lower right corner and drag it to the right and I would have created a second drop list. Let's change the value for the second drop list and let's say I want to select a Canadian dollar so I go down to letter C and here is the Canadian dollar. One more thing I would like to do, I want whenever I select from this list Australian dollar or any other currency, I want in the other worksheet, in my preparation worksheet, the list worksheet, I want to get the abbreviation. How do I get the abbreviation out of this text? Well, I need to use a VLOOKUP function. So let's create our VLOOKUP function in the list worksheet. So I'll type equal VLOOKUP. What's your lookup value? I go to the exchange rate, it's the from currency. And then I hit comma, what's your table array? My table array will be the table coming from the result of Power Query. So I'm selecting the entire table. I select the top row, shift, control, down, arrow. And then I hit control, backspace to jump back to the top. Then I hit comma, what's your column index number? I need to extract the symbol, which is in column two. So I type two, and then I hit comma. I'm looking for an exact match. Exact means false, so I'll be typing zero, which equals false, and I close the bracket and then hit enter. That's exactly what I want. It extracts the symbol for the Australian dollar, AUD. I can drag to the right, and now I'm getting the symbol by using another VLOOKUP function that extracts the two symbol for the two currency. My next step is to create some currency pairs in preparation for using the stocks data type and extract the exchange rate. So if I type an equal sign and then combine the Australian dollar, then type an end symbol and then select the two value, the Canadian dollar. So now when I combine them, the stocks data type is not going to work. The stocks data type doesn't give me what I want because I have a formula here in this cell, I need to replace the formula by the value, by the result of this formula. But because I'll be continuously changing the from and to in the exchange rate worksheet, and accordingly, the VLOOKUP will be carrying the abbreviation, the from and to, to the list worksheet, then the value in column H, the currency pairs, should be dynamic. And in order to create it once, I'm going to record the macro that is performing all these steps for me. So I start by deleting this value, and then I start by going to the exchange rates datasheet, and then I want to create my macro. To record the macro, I need the developer tab of the ribbon. I already have the developer tab of the ribbon. If you don't have it, just right-click on any tab and select Customize the ribbon, and from the dialog box, check the developer tab I'm not going to do that because I already have it. On the Developer tab, I want to record an absolute macro. To the very left of the Developer tab, I have a group code for recording macro. Make sure that use relative reference is not highlighted because I'm not recording a relative macro, I'm recording an absolute macro. I start recording by clicking on Record Macro, and I want to give it a name. I'll name it, let's say, Convert. And then I hit enter. Now I'm in the process of recording. Step number one in my recording is to go absolutely to the list worksheet. And then I'll be selecting cell H2. I need to combine the from and to symbol. So I'll type an equal sign. And then I hit the left arrow twice. Type shift seven on my keyboard, the end symbol, and then hit the left arrow once. I'm combining the from and to symbols. I'm going to hit control enter. And that will return the currency pairs. As I said, the stocks data type will not work, will not perceive it so long as it's a function. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy. You see the dancing ends all around, and I'm going to paste the value in place. So I hit Control V from the Options tag, from the Paste Options tag, I select Paste Value, the leftmost option in the third row, and that will do the job for me. Now I don't see a formula anymore. Now the stocks data type will be working. 
Let's hit escape to stop the dancing ends. And then to extract the exchange rate, I go to the data tab of the ribbon. And on the data tab, I click on stocks. And that will replace these abbreviations for the currency pairs by the currency themselves. I have a little tag here for adding a column, insert data. If you click on this options tag, you can select from the list the from currency. And here you go. It adds a column for the from. I want to extract the two currencies, so I click one more time, and I select currency, that's the two currency, and I click one third time and get the magical part, which is the exchange rate, which is the price. When I select price, that brings the price back for me, and this is what I need. In order to stop the recording, I'm still in the process of recording, I go to exchange rate, and then on the developer tab of the ribbon, I click on stop recording, and I finish creating my macro. Now that we have a price returned by the macro, I want to use that price in performing my currency conversion. So let's continue building our setup for the currency. That should be the abbreviation of the from. Instead of recreating my VLOOKUP function, I'm going to type an equal sign, click on the list worksheet, and click on from. And then I hit enter. For the currency, that should be the abbreviation of the two currency. Then I'll be typing an equal sign, and then go and grab it from the list worksheet by clicking on the two. And then I hit enter. That's exactly what we need. Now we need to perform the calculation. Any amount that I type in cell C2 should be multiplied by the price. So under total, I type an equal sign and I say whatever amount I type in cell C2, please go ahead and multiply it by going to the list and grab the price that we extracted. And now I have my currency converter ready to test. What if I want to convert 500 Australian dollars to Canadian dollar? So under amount, I type 500, and then when I hit enter, that's beautiful. It's working just fine. But what will happen if I change the currency? Let's say, instead of Australian dollar, I click on the down arrow, I have a drop list and say, I want the British pound. Nothing changes here. It's not dynamic. I need to trigger my macro. But I can go to the developer tab and trigger my macro by clicking on macro, select the macro and run it, and that will work. But that's a hassle. I don't want to trigger the macro this way. I want it to be triggered automatically whenever I change anything in the from drop list, in the to drop list, or even if I change the amount. Whenever I change A2 or B2 or C2, I want the macro to be triggered so the calculation is updated automatically. How to do that? I need to attach the macro, the convert macro that I created to the change event of this worksheet. That's very simple. I go to the worksheet and on the worksheet tab I'm going to right click and select view code. When I click on view code I need the worksheet events so I click on the left drop list in the top of the module and then I select worksheet. When you select worksheet it opens the selection change event. That's not the event I'm looking for. I just want the change event so from the right drop list I select change and here is the change event that I'm looking for. And now let's write our code. Here it says by val target as range, which means if my target is cell A2, or if my target is cell B2, or if my target is cell C2, any change in these three cells, what do you want to do? I need to go and call the convert macro that I recorded. I'm going to delete the first one. I don't need it anymore. So between the private sub and end sub, I'll be writing by code. It's a conditional statement. If the target dot address equals range A2 dot address, or if it is equal to B2 dot address, or if it is equal to C2 dot address, then what would you like to do? Well, I would like to call the convert macro that I recorded earlier. If you want it to look better, then we can indent this code by hitting the tab key. And then here is my code. Everything should be working fine right now. It's a very simple code, but I'm going to write it for you in the source worksheet. Now let's go back to Excel by clicking on the Excel icon. Any change in A2, B2, and C2 will trigger that macro. Let's see. I select from the first drop list. I want to go back at the top and select the Australian dollar, and the macro is triggered automatically. Let's change the two. I'm going to change 
from Canadian dollar to Chinese yuan and the macro is triggered automatically let's select one more time and make a change in the amount and look what happens because in my macro I was recording switching between the exchange rates worksheet and list so I see a flickering in my screen look at that when I triggered the macro by making a change to cell C2 I'm going to type let's say 600 and when I hit enter, look at that, there is a flickering. I don't want to see this flickering anymore. It requires stopping the screen updating. And it's a very little modification that I'll be adding to my convert macro. I want to go to my convert macro and add two lines of code to turn off the screen updating and then to turn it back on. How do I do this? On the Developer tab, I click on Macro. The only macro I have is the Convert Macro, so I click on Edit. That will take me to that macro. I'm going to click to the left side of the first line of code, and I type application.screenupdating equal false. And then to the very end of this code, before the end sub, I'll be typing the same exact line of code, but this time I want to turn the screen updating back on that's all what i need that should stop the flickering of my screen let's go back to excel by clicking on the excel icon on the left side of the toolbar and now in excel if i make a change this time from australian dollar let's select the british pound one more time everything is working fine no screen flickering anymore if i change from chinese yuan and let's say this time we need to select i go down and i'll be selecting euro the conversion is working fine if I change the amount and let's make it 468 by hitting enter my currency exchange calculator is working just fine and these rates are extracted from the internet these are live rates due to the amazing stocks data type and the enhancement of the exchange rate everything is dynamic any change in a2 b2 or c2 then my macro, the convert macro is triggered, the multiplication is done, the price is extracted, the price is up to date due to the enhanced tox data type. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share, and don't forget to hit the big subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. Thank you for watching and see you next time.